things fall apart, sometimes they have to. Tonight's game, somebody will lose. Everything they've lived for in their career, for some, and in recent years for others, for them, will fall apart. Tonight, somebody's going to lose. Science fiction is all about it these days. So many series are all over TV and in theaters that show a future overrun by zombies, vampires, androids, robots. In all of them, we are given to understand that it's the horrible humans we have to fear. Perhaps that's true. This is reinforced in shows that about deeply twisted stuff going on in prisons and hospitals and police departments and government. Horror creeps even closer in dramas exploring the danger lurking all around us, even in our families. The problem with all this is it gets harder to change the channel. News stations serve up hourly global fears that rival anything fiction could produce. Real life lived locally has its own shattering aspects. Likely almost all of us have answered the phone or opened emails to discover <laughs> stunning news about friends and loved ones, news of a sudden diagnosis or an accident, natural disasters or some stupid violence. Possible constitutional crisis is brought up by both parties weekly, almost daily. Culture wars threaten the relevance of everything Catholic with schism. Things fall apart, and perhaps that free fall, that free fall is closer than we expect. For all these reasons, we may find a weird connection with the mysterious Job whose life is falling apart before our very eyes. The words of Job. If ever my grief were measured or my sorrow put on a scale, it would outweigh the sands of the ocean that is why I'm desperate, for God has ringed me with terrors, and his arrows have pierced my heart. If only my prayers were answered, and God granted my wish. If only he made an end of me, snipping my life like a thread. That is my only comfort as I writhe in this savage pain. How long can I keep on waiting? Why should I stay alive? All my strength has left me. All hope has been driven away. Human life is a prison. Humans are sentenced to pain and grief. Like a slave, humans pant for the shadows. Like a servant, he longs for rest. Each day I live seems endless, and I suffer through endless nights. When I lie down, I long for the morning. When I get up, I long for the night. All day I toss and turn. My flesh crawls with maggots. My skin cracks and oozes. My days fly past me like a shuttle, and my hope snaps like a thread. Remember, life is a breath. Soon I will vanish from your sight. The eye that looks will not see me. You may search, but I will be gone. If I say sleep will comfort me, I will lay down to ease my pain. Then you terrify me with visions and nightmares that choke me with horror. I wake up gasping for breath, longing to be dead at last. I will not live forever. Leave me, for my days are wind. To those words, the lector said, the word of the Lord. To those words, you answered, thanks be to God. I heard you. 
You said, thanks be to God. Loss and devastation are Job's specialty. In a few short chapters, there's an environmental catastrophe and the loss of everything Job loved and cherished. And no one knows who to blame. So everybody is blaming everybody else for what's happening. Sound familiar? In the United States of America, Republicans blame Democrats. Democrats blame Republic the president. And the president blames the media. There's more than enough blaming going around in our country right now. The entire book of Job is boiling, boiling with warnings that things fall apart now or someday are at the very end. If Job's life has a theme, it's that the present situation can be as bad as it gets. And unless we get to the as bad as it gets, sometimes nothing will change. Because people will change nothing until things fall apart. Our own lives, our families, the church, our government. Sometimes it seems to be what needs to happen. Things need to fall apart. Ask anybody in this chapel this morning who's in recovery from an addiction. Until they hit the bottom, nothing will change. Until your marriage hits the bottom, nothing will change. Is that what it will take for the church? Is that what it will take for the United States of America? For our schools? Is that what it will take for our families, for ourselves? Have we hit bottom yet? Will even more have to fall apart before we do? Everything is not right here. Someone wrote, Reality rides a seesaw in which the tipping point is just a tiny shift of gravity away. The ground underneath is not stable. We all sort of know that. And Job is telling us just that as we place one foot in front of the other on that unstable ground. And as the ground goes, so do we all. Things can definitely become much worse very quickly. What happened to Job was vintage falling apart. It is every bit as scary as any of those zombie invasions. When the world devours everything we've loved or believed in, all we have left as we rush forward like the players on those Super Bowl fields tonight, relentlessly forward, not knowing whether we will win or lose, unrestrainedly forward, no matter who is doing the blocking. Things fall apart. People do too. So do plans and careers and relationships, living situations, our own personal identities. We think we know who we are, what we are about, what we're capable of. Then we say or do something we never imagined could come from us. And suddenly there's a stranger in the mirror. Our illusions, illusions about the world and ourselves wind up in fragments on the floor regularly. Yes. Things fall apart. Planets fall apart. Private worlds can be annihilated quickly in just a handful of words. I want a divorce. The test came back positive. The storm took everything. That's the message Job shouts to the world. And in the end, he says, we become who we've always been. I went for a walk recently with a student, an undergrad.
things fell apart for him last Christmas a year ago. He went home to the announcement that his parents were divorcing. That Christmas, his family fell apart. After the shock, he tried to convince himself that it didn't really bother him. After all, he had been away from home for a few years now, and he was doing fine. So what did it matter, really, in the end? He tried to tell himself that there was this divorce on the horizon. He was fine. But the feelings of betrayal and loss started to come, and come they did. Yes, he had to establish strong boundaries with his parents, new rules of engagement they've never had to have before to maintain his health and his sanity. But the baseline of faith, the baseline of faith that he had well established in his younger years, including here at college, that baseline of faith and the company of good friends that he'd invested his life in these years carried him to the other side of that collapse of those things falling apart. And he still, he is still becoming the best of what he had always been. In his words, I had to surrender some power. I had to come to terms with what I could control and what I could not. And realize the world is not going to be the way that I would design it to be. I now value community and what I have more than ever. And you know, at least I still have a mom and a dad. If you are somebody whose personal world is falling apart right now, or you are suffering deeply the falling apart, perhaps it feels like, of the church or of the, of the government, a government or a church you once loved, a nation you once believed in, then what Job is telling you is just this. Stay the course. Stay the course. Don't quit what you love just because it seems to be falling apart. Keep pushing forward. Choose kindness when others are silent. Mend when others are tearing apart. Share when others are hoarding. Risk when others hold back in fear. Plow through those blocks plow through those blocks like those running backs on that field tonight. Plow through those blocks in your life, in our world. One day at a time, every day, and just for that day. And trust, trust that if each of us is doing our best to do just that, it will somehow, some way, carry us to the other side where something new can be created it's going to hurt like hell in the process. Yes, indeed, it will hurt like hell in the process of this recreating of our worlds. Stay the course, Job says. He also says, remember. Remember we have each other. We have each other on the way to this recreation good, cultivated, lifelong friendships. I was at a dinner recently with some friends, and one of the guys was sharing something very personal to him. I was watching him, and I was looking around that room, and what occurred to me is that this guy is surrounded by people right here tonight who will be there for him when he dies. I wondered if he knew that. I wondered that night if he knew that when things fall apart for him, that all these people, these people, will be there for him. 
stay the course. We have each other. And if we expect to keep it together when things falls apart, we will need each other, but even more. Even more than that. That's not going to be good enough. What we most deeply need is God. A higher power. A way to continuously connect with the source that will pour into us the strength we will need if we are to stay the course. Who will pour into us the strength we need if we are to stay the course. A God who can create out of nothing because that's what God does. And that's when God does God's best creation is when there's nothing left because this is how God creates out of nothing something new and even better. But my friends, there's one last thing you and I have to remember. It will never be what it was. What Job got in the end was not all that was taken from him. He never got that back. We can never go back. We can never get back. The church that gave us so much comfort, the government that gave us so much security, the family that I love that gave me so much that is not ever going to be again what it was. But through it all, we can sing, and we can sing what Job sang. Through it all, one loss after the other, things crumbling all around him, his own life, we can sing what he kept singing, the song that did not die in Job. When things are falling apart, we can sing still and always. I know that my Redeemer lives, and I shall rise again. I know that my Redeemer lives, and I shall rise again.